Books presents podcast and interview series. We publish great books on the mind, body, spirit connection. And my guest today is Pierre Pradervand, author of 365 Blessings to Heal Yourself and the World. Hi, Pierre. Hello there, Daniela. It's really wonderful speaking to you um, because I'm learning a lot from uh, looking at your book, at your recent book, because you've had many previous books. Um, and I'm fascinated by the art of blessing. Can you tell us more about it? Well, of course, when I speak of blessing, it's something very, very different from what one does at, in church at the end of a service, for instance. For me, it means sending focused love energy to a person, a situation, a creature, anything living on this planet. And uh, it's something I discovered when I was in a, in a very difficult challenge. I was working for a group of NGOs in the schools. On uh, I started an educational program on North-South issues. That was in the 80s. And I was doing very good work. My sponsors were extremely happy. I financed a whole exhibit on hunger with my own savings because they had no money for for the exhibit in their budget. And this was a roving exhibit that went from one school to another. And uh, there's one guy in these organizations which just who just hated my guts. And he wanted absolutely to get rid of me. And he created a whole uh, a very difficult situation where I was would have been forced to give up a very deep conviction of mine just to continue my job. And uh, he put me in this situation knowing I would resign. And I did resign. And I developed a resentment that was just eating me up, Daniela. I would wake up in the morning. The first thing I'd think about was this, under the shower, doing cooking, going to the post office or anywhere. It became what psychologists call an obsession. A thought that you cannot get rid of. And I knew I was harming myself. And I was praying, meditating, reading spiritual texts, doing all the right things. Nothing happened. And then one day, this verse from this statement from a great, great avatar of 2000 years ago called Jesus came to me, bless those who curse you. And I thought, well, of course, it's so simple. I just have to bless him. And I started blessing this man and all the others concerned. And I'd started blessing from morning to night. And suddenly, three, week, three months later, I started blessing people in the street in, on public transport. I don't have a car. And uh, just everywhere in the supermarket, on trains. And it became so enjoyable that I used to go the whole length of the train both in both directions to be sure to miss no one. And uh, some time later, I'd been asked to give an international talk to an, <coughs> sorry to give a talk to an international meeting of young people in Zurich, and the theme of the talk was healing the world. <coughs> <coughs> sorry, as the tail end of a cough, <coughs> and um, I was preparing my talk on healing the world when suddenly this one page text called the gentle art of blessing was literally inspired to me i can't say i was like a scribe under orders just writing writing this one page text which i started sharing with friends in letters and i started getting replies from all around the world telling me it works it works it heals and uh, after a few years, I have an extraordinary publisher. He encouraged me to write a book on the theme. The first book came out, The Gentle Art of Blessing. And then later on, this last, last year, the old book, 365 Blessings to Heal the World. And this, for me, has become a day-long activity. It's something I do the whole time, uh, or I try to do the whole time whenever I enter a a new place, a post office, or a bus, or anywhere. And it is helping people all around the world. 
so you bless people you you are a blesser i bless if I people can call it that. yes but not in the churchy sense of the word word you know i i send love energy and i always bless the person in the spiritual quality opposed to for instance the material suffering if i uh, notice a drunkard yelling in the street or on the bus i bless him in his serenity i bless him in his dominion i bless him in his peace if i look uh, see someone who's extremely depressed i will bless them in their joy i will bless them in their sense of purpose and sometimes i remember one lady in, i saw in the bus she was so depressed i continued blessing her for three months just because her face was constantly in my mind and uh, you can bless animals you can bless situations world situations anything so this is really more about how you react to a situation because we all obviously have been through difficult situations in life through situation perhaps where somebody has harmed us um, obviously when we're here in Europe maybe uh, less difficult than people who live in war zones how do you find it in yourself um, and how do you suggest to others to find it in themselves to send love and peace and blessings to those who harm them? Well, how does that work? To those who harm them or just in general? To those who harm them because it's more difficult. I think maybe in general it's okay, very, well, you know, um, it's, it's perhaps easier to send somebody who's done you no know, harm. But what sure. about if somebody has, like in your case even? Okay, well, it has come to me so clearly in recent years, I mean, it's so, so clear that everyone is at every single moment at their highest level of consciousness. So once you really understand that, you can't resent anything they do. On the contrary, you can only feel compassion for them. For instance, some time ago, I received a phone call and a, a person spoke to me in English with a very strong Indian accent saying, this is the Apple Windows office in London, we are phoning you, you have problems with your computer, <laughs> your computer is working rather slowly, and I'm a caveman, Daniela, in computers and, and internet, and I straight away uh, swallowed the bait, and uh, suddenly I saw his uh, mouse moving around my screen, so evidently, I, I without even realizing, let him, gave him access to my screen, and he started correcting things and rubbing things out, telling me we have to do this and then that. And after 25 minutes, I feel a great feeling of unease. Hey, hey, there's something rather bizarre happening here. And after 30 minutes, he says, well, it's $150, $150. And we said, I said, but we never agreed upon anything. Oh, you know that today everything is payable. If you have a bank card, you can uh, pay me straight away. Instead of unplugging my internet contact naive as i was i paid immediately with my bank card and we said goodbye and i jumped on my phone and phoned my webmaster who said pierre you've been tricked in the most classical manner cancel your bank card immediately pull out your internet contact and you'll have to come visit me because uh, uh, evidently your whole system has been fouled up and the whole thing cost me something like 300 and 350 pounds at least and uh, because my webmaster isn't in geneva he lives in another part of switzerland and the second daniela the second i realized i'd been tricked i started blessing the man in question my webmaster told me that in bombay and new delhi they have whole offices with dozens of people who are doing this the whole day long I felt such compassion for the man because he can never be happy if he, spend, if he spends his life tricking people all around the planet. How can he ever know true happiness? And I blessed him for weeks, if not months, after that event. But especially, Daniela, I didn't feel the slightest resentment, only compassion that someone felt compelled to do such a lousy job to earn their living. 
And I guess there's more, uh, more and more people around when we listen to the news and, and, you know, we live our daily lives because we can't all live at the top of a mountain. In of some, course not. Um, and most of us don't, although it's a very enviable um, position, position to be able to be in. Um, how can we go uh, through life and perhaps daily jobs and daily interactions um, do you have any suggestions as to how can we turn ourselves around instead of feeling resentment? I'm not sure I would have it in me to go and bless the person who just tricked me into giving him my credit card number. And, and I understand what you're saying, but <coughs> I think many of us might find it difficult to do. Do you have any uh, tips or any ways of, of helping us see how this can be done? Well, I would say, Daniela, for me, there are three basic qualities for anyone who wants to engage in a spiritual path. Firstly, a clear intention. What do I really, really want to achieve? But something absolutely clear and motivating. Secondly, sincerity. For me, that is so fundamental. Mary Baker Eddy, a, a writer, a metaphysician in the States of the 19th century, once said, a deep sincerity is sure of success, for God takes care of it. Now, God, nobody knows what God is, so you put the universe or the source or divine love, whichever word corresponds to your vision of God. So, I repeat, a deep sincerity is sure of success, for the universe takes care of it, or divine love takes care of it. And the third quality is perseverance. Daniela, I've been doing this for 30 years. It's easy for me now, but it wasn't at the beginning. So these three qualities are really essential. Intention or motivation, sincerity, and perseverance. This is um, very inspiring, Pierre. Intention, sincerity, and perseverance. And... Um, when you say you bless people, you bless people who you meet, you bless people who you haven't met, perhaps you want to send them love or, or yes. good vibes, as some of us would call it. Um, can you give us an example of, of what kind of blessings you can send their way? Well, I've given examples already of people whom I see with problems like the drunkard or the person who was depressed. But <clears throat> really blessing is something spontaneous that flows from the heart. And I think my book on 365 blessings to heal myself and the world will give many examples. There are so many ways to bless. What counts is that you let your inspiration and love flow. If you feel the slightest compassion, the slightest, the words will come to you. Now, you know, it's not come, going to come in five days. It's not going to come in five days or two weeks. It might require much longer, although with some people, they manage it immediately as soon as they hear of it. Everyone's different and unique. So, yes? And do you say them out loud or do you say them in your heart? What, I, from your experience, what works best? I say it in my heart always. And now I've so gotten into blessing that sometimes... I don't even have to say words. I look at the person with a deep, deep feeling of caring or love or compassion or joy, because the real communicator in this universe is the divine source. We are just channels to express the divine. But uh, be, be spontaneous. You know, there are, there's no right way of blessing, Daniela. There's, that's, I want to insist on that. There's no right way of blessing. The only thing that must be there is a clear intention and a sincere motivation. That is essential. I know there are many people who uh, like to get together in groups and do group meditation or group. Yes. Uh, I haven't heard the word blessing as such uh, used perhaps in this context, but can it be? Well, 12 years ago in Geneva, I created a blessing circle and we may meet every two weeks. 
And we first start by blessing individuals who've requested help or that you, one of the members knows of. And then we bless world situations like the situation in Syria or the, the, the situation of the oceans and plastic pollution and, and all that. And there are other blessing circles I've heard from a few people. Anyone can create their own blessing circle. And for instance, we start by lighting a candle. Our, each one has a little candle and uh, so saying our first name. And then we start by just a moment of silence. Then we read a short spiritual text. And each time it's someone different. And then we have a moment just to express gratitude. Because gratitude is one of the most powerful spiritual forces in the world. And there's nothing as powerful to stay positive. Daniela, it is impossible to feel sincere, sincere gratitude and have any negative feeling. Impossible. So we start by going around the circle and everyone who wants expresses gratitude. And then we have a, a good hour of blessing. And we finish by a moment's silence. And afterwards, we, we, we have a little, we share a few, uh, a light meal. And it is so wonderful. The love in that group, you can feel it. It's palpable. Because when you bless others, you bless yourselves. That's exactly my, my question, because the title of your book is 365 Blessings to Heal Myself and the World. So when we get ourselves out of our own head, our own misery, our own uh, feeling that some somebody has wronged us, um, how did that help you advance yourself on your journey? Not talking about others now. Somewhere I feel, Daniela, that we are all linked in a way much deeper than anyone can imagine. I think there is one infinite mind in the universe, and this wonderful man, oh, his name slips in my mind, he's, he's written a book called uh, uh, One Mind. Uh, he's an American MD who's one of, start, one of the ones who started the alternative medicine movement, and now he's very much into spirituality. One Mind. And uh, my main spiritual inter uh, inspiration at the present moment for quite a few years has been a, a man called Joel Goldsmith. He was an amazing American mystic of the last century, Joel Goldsmith. And he had a very powerful vision, non-dual vision of the divine. And he said... We are waves on the ocean. And I love, I love this metaphor. It's one I use often in my private meditation. I just feel myself as a wave, totally one with the ocean and with all the other waves, linked to all the other waves. So when you bless others, you're automatically blessing yourself because there is one wave. One, one ocean and one mind. It's very interesting because uh, I just happened to meet that uh, American man um, who wrote One Mind, Larry Dossie. Oh, that's right, Larry Dossie. Um, in you. New Mexico um, ah. a few years ago. And I, I understand what you're saying because he's a medical doctor, right? Yes, and exactly. while many of us can talk about our experiences and, and um, perhaps... Um, things that we've learned in our lives. He talks about it from the medical perspective. Exactly. Exactly. So what yeah. happens is when we bless others, we actually help heal ourselves in the most exactly. literal way. Is exactly. that what you're saying? Exactly, Daniela. That's very, very interesting. Um, I would like to ask you one more question, perhaps, because I know you also wor uh, run workshops and you teach. Um, yes. Can you tell us a little bit about how a blessing workshop would look like? Well, again, I think there's no rigid formula. I run all my workshops on the 
a, a similar way. Uh, I have a workshop called The Gentle Art of Blessing. And we start by, uh, I, I set uh, a few guidelines for the workshops, like absolutely no judgment and uh, staying open to everyone, not interrupting. And uh, then uh, I share my, start by sharing my own experience of blessing and how I discovered it. And, uh, and then I have group sessions, for instance, on learning to see that everyone is at the highest level of consciousness and maybe a, a moment where everyone would compose a blessing on any theme they think of that touches them and then we share the, the different blessings and I don't want to go into uh, into this in, in much greater detail because there again I don't believe in standard manners of blessing or even standard manners of running a workshop. It's so individual. Again, once more, what is essential is the intention, the sincerity, and the perseverance. If you want to start a, a blessing circle in your area, just, you know, plunge in the, into the sea and start it. If you want to try and organize a, a workshop, do it. People can always communicate with me. I have my email address at the end of my book and um, and I think that's uh, all I'd like to say and you have a website which we will also write at the end ah, yes. uh, so people can keep it the gentle art of blessing dot org is that Ex correct exactly and that it is bilingual English and French and we hope to get other translations in the near future and especially if you go on the website uh, first, start by looking at the incredibly beautiful video by Jane Young on the home page. Uh, the video is called The Gentle Art of Blessing. It lasts about six to seven minutes. And then after that, make a beeline for the section on healing through blessing. You will find so amazing, such amazing healings. I, one of my preferred healings is this, this gentleman who was head of a large supermarket in a large supermarket chain in Switzerland. And he gets a terrible case of depression and he had to go to clinic and he has all the chemotherapy and all these funny treatments. And after a few months there, the doctors think he's okay to leave the clinic and he starts his work again. And then he starts sliding back into depression and he's, Totally, totally uh, anguished about this. And he goes to see his, his MD, his, his, his psychiatrist. And uh, this is the amazing part. A psychiatrist, a modern psychiatrist, saying, Mr. Ullman, I refuse to give you any more pills, any medication. Here is my medication. And he hands him my book, the Gentle Art of Blessing, that's my first book on blessing, and the book by Eckhart Tolle, uh, The Power of Now. And this, this gentleman threw himself into blessing, and it pulled him completely out of depression. And he says, as a head of a supermarket, I have so many opportunities to bless all day long. So I find that <laughs> such a lovely, lovely uh, Example, and there are many others like this MD friend who was captured by Tuareg rebels in Niger, in in Africa, and with two other colleagues who were on a humanitarian mission, and they were all released by the chief, the head of the Tuaregs himself, after they'd been captured without any explanation, and she had a dear friend of hers who at that very moment and spent a long moment blessing her because he felt she was in a situation of, of dire need. So there are so many different examples people will really enjoy because that's the real thing. I'm not interested in theory, Dianilia, at all. The only thing for me that counts is, does it heal? Does it help humanity advance? That's wonderful, Pierre. Thank you so much for introducing us 
to the art of blessing. 365 blessings to heal myself and the world. It was a pleasure talking with you today, Pierre. Thank you. Thank you, Danelia. I enjoyed it immensely. Thank you. Bye-bye. And gentle blessings on all of you who have been listening to this podcast. God bless you. This is Daniela Norris with All Books Presents, podcast and interview series. We publish great books on the mind, body, and spirit connection. And my guest today was Pierre Pradervand, teacher, speaker, and author of 365 Blessings to Heal Myself and the World, and many other wonderful books. You can find these books at your favorite bookshop and order them online and connect with Pierre through his website, gentleartofblessing.org. Thank you so much for listening.